All right, so given x equals minus b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, we've got some surds here. It's not going to be pretty, but if we keep going at it one thing at a time, we should be all right. Our task is to find the exact, look at that bold word exact, exact value. That's usually a hint that there's an irrational number in the final answer. If a equals negative 1, be careful with that negative sign. b is a square root, and c is a fraction. All kinds of messy stuff happening here. But let's get started and uh, see how far we go. So um, whenever I substitute in, I always try to substitute into brackets. Is that a strategy you use as well? Yes. And why that, does that help so much? Um, so here, especially when b, was ne b is negative, then negative, negative, and sometimes that, that can mess you up. Um, the squares, if you don't put a bracket around, that can mess you up. So there are many, many ways that you can uh, make a mistake. And I think putting a bracket around the numbers uh, maybe help a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it helps a lot. It helps to get uh, your head around those integer rules and keep everything straight. So negative root 7 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 57 over 4. The other thing we sometimes see students do is when they don't substitute into brackets, suddenly that little bit here, four, minus 4 minus times negative 1, right? Well, that's obvious with the 4ac, but I've seen students subtract those values instead of multiply mm. if they don't have brackets. So it's very important to substitute into brackets. Right. Okay, so I am done substituting in. Can we uh, simplify now? Underneath that square root sign, we can do some stuff. Out front, we can drop the bracket now because it's minus root 7. And then underneath, we know that the inverse operation square rooting and squared will cancel each other out, so we just have 7 there. A negative times a negative, this is where it gets interesting, right? Negative times negative becomes positive. And then you've got a 4 over a 4. Those are going to cancel out. And 57 is left over. So negative times negative is positive. 4s cancel. And that mess of fractions and integers are suddenly getting cleaned up. And all over negative 2. OK. I can go ahead and add 57 and Fifty-seven and seven, six and four, it's all over negative two. Good. Now sixty-four is one of our special perfect square numbers. What's that going to reduce to? Eight, because eight times eight is sixty-four. Excellent. So technically, this is the correct answer. However, we notice something everywhere. So what can we do next? We can, oh, mm, how, how would you explain that? I, I would say uh, multiply both numerator, by, numerator and denominator by negative 1. Sure, you can multiply top and bottom by negative 1. Yeah. Or you could factor out a negative 1 from the numerator. Yeah. Both strategies work equally so let's efficiently. Say. Let's do this because this fits in nicely with our clearing fractions idea. So we're left with root 7 plus 8 over 2. Looks quite different, but it's, it is the same. Right. Good. Mr. So Kerbis, I have a question. Yeah? I see that there's an 8 and here's a 2. Can I simplify these two together and make it? No! Wait, 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 wait. Can I, can I do this? Oh, that drives us crazy. Don't do it. No, I have to. Oh, no, you don't. Here. Uh -oh. So, could this be the correct answer? Because that looks simpler than that. It does look simpler. However, if we take some numbers, and remember that we're just dealing with numbers here, right? Mm. Some of them are irrational, but don't get confused by that. Nobody would make this mistake. What, 9 plus 8 over 4, right? We all know that's 17 over 4. It is definitely not equal to 11. That's quite clear, right? 9 plus 8. So what's not so obvious, but I always try to stress is that the numerator, although not in brackets, is technically behaves like order of operations. You would have to do that before. And you can't collect the root 7 and the 8 together. It doesn't come together, right? Multiplying would be a different story. 
but here you're adding. So you have to add the 8 and the root 7 together before dividing by 2, right? Technically, you could, if you wanted, root 7 over 2 plus 8 over 2 and call that a 4, but it's fine to leave your answer in this form. And this is the best form. Definitely don't cancel unless it comes out of everywhere. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah, all right.